Hello, and welcome to lecture 10. In this lecture, we're finally going to make something useful. Namely, this is what we're going to make today. When you type in the name of the picture, it will show up. For those of you that have never been to Spain, let me give you a little show and tell. Particularly, this is the city I used to live, Madrid. Here's the picture of the royal palace. Just to give you an idea of how large the palace is, I'm about six feet tall. Those statues you see are probably three to two times my height. This is the Egyptian temple right in the city. It was a gift from Egypt a long time ago. It's kind of odd to see this while in the middle of Madrid because you see these big buildings and all of a sudden you see the Nile River and this is the sunset of Madrid taken from a very tall building a bunch of friends and I we snuck up the building to take this picture we were caught and almost arrested but we got the picture this is a picture of Rebecca and me when we snuck up the building to take the previous picture this is the most precious picture I have it was taken on a street called Gran Via. Um, this is basically the Times Square of Spain. You can't see much from this picture since the resolution is really low. From the original picture with very high resolution, you'll see people in every single window looking at this fountain at this particular moment. We probably had over 10 different people taking this picture and recording the scene. I can't tell you what's in the picture, but maybe you can figure it out. So now that you know what this program does, we're going to learn how to make it. In the future, we'll be adding more to this program to maybe add like a short story on the side. We can make it more user-friendly as well. But for now, this program is pretty cool to start. Since this is a large project, I'm going to divide it into two lectures. In this particular lecture, I'm going to go over the important concepts that we're going to need to program this. There are two main themes I want to talk about. First, we must talk about variables. What are they? What they can be? Next, we will learn the concept of global and local variables. They determine where your variables are known to the program. These two concepts are extremely important in creating the application. In general, if you have ever had any programming experience, they will always talk about variables and global and local domain. If you have taken that before, this class will be extremely easy. If you haven't, you should pay attention because this is pretty important stuff. So, let's first get started with the concept of variables. What are they? Well, you can see them as the names of a container. When you assign a value to a variable, for example, a statement like number equals to 5, what you're really doing is putting the number 5 into the container. So in the future, when people ask you about number, you will look at the container and say that it contains number 5. The most common way we use the variable is by printing them out. For example, we will use the statement print number. This statement is exactly the same as print 5. There are two types of numbers we print out, integers and floats. Integers are whole numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The floats can be anything else, 2.3, 1 over 2, 4 over 5, 45.32. The reason why this is important is because when you divide integers with integers, you get integers. For example, if you take 1 and divide by 9, 1 over 9, notice how it prints out 0? Well, this is obviously wrong. The reason why it prints out 0 is because the actual number is 0 is 0 0.1111111. But since the answer must be an integer and a whole number, 
the decimals are automatically cut out. To solve this problem, you want to make one of the number a float value. By doing so, your answer will also be a float. Let's make the number 9 into 9.0. Notice how now it's putting out 0 0.11111. You want to make sure you pay close attention to this detail. You will be spending a lot of hours trying to figure out what is wrong with your program, when all you have to do is add a point zero at the end of a number. Besides numbers, this container can also be used for many other types of objects. You can put words in them, you could put sentence in them. The way you differentiate between numbers and words is by adding quotes around the words. For example, you can treat 5 as a word or as a number. If you write number equals to 5, 5 in this case is a word. If you try to add a number to it, it will confuse the computer. You cannot do addition and subtraction with words. However, if you use a statement such as number equals to 5, now you know that number is a 5. So if you create another number called number 2 equals to 9, and you print out number plus number 2, you'll get 14. With words or sentences, the proper name for them is a string. With strings, you can use either single quotes or double quotes. Normally, a single quote is good enough. However, sometimes a single quote might be in your sentence. For example, for the sentence, I don't want to smell your sock. There's a single quote right inside the sentence at don't. The, to enclose the sentence like this one, we will need to use a double quote so the interpreter doesn't get confused. Now that we have gone over three types of variables, integers, floats, and strings, there is one more type. They are called booleans. Booleans are the most simple type we have. You put either true or false into the container. The way you assign a boolean is by capital T-R-U-E or capital F, false. 